What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel. So in this video we are going to look at a fairly controversial subject of how good of a finish can you get just using a flexible trowel all the way through the stages. Now what I will say is that in this video I will still be applying the plaster using a rigid trowel. Now for those that watch our channel you'll know that we like to use uh, carbon steel trowels and the trowel that I'll be using today is the one that I've been putting on plus with for quite some time which is the 13 inch carbon steel Marshalltown but then after it's applied I'll be doing everything just using a flexible trowel. Now you might be wondering which flexible trowel am I going to use and no it isn't the Rafinha Superflex 3 of which we have reviewed before on this channel. Instead I'm opening myself up to an awful lot of flack and I am going to use this trowel here. Now this here is an 18 inch uh, Nella Midi. So it's their slightly stiffer flexible trowel. Now for those again that watch our channel you will know that we did a video some time ago, I'll link it somewhere on the screen where we discuss which is the best plastering trowel size and we encouraged not using trowels that went over 14 inches and the reason being is because you get fade on the edges as soon as you go over 14 inches you can't get even pressure across it so i thought it'd be worth a go to see just how good of a finish can i get using this absolute monster of a trowel but why is it that i'm interested in seeing how good of a finish i can get well, the reason being is because, as I've mentioned, the last couple of weeks I've been flattening in just with this. And what I've found, instead of using the plastic spatulas, you tend to pay a little bit more attention to the quality of the flattening when you are using a trout. And obviously, because it's so much wider, it's easier to get it a little flatter. However, that is when the plaster is wet. So how will this trout perform as this trout, the plaster starts to pick up and it starts to dry? Will we start seeing those uh, waves? Am I still able to get that nice finish? Uh, and does it massively affect the overall quality or even the timing on the set? So we hope you enjoyed the video. Consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing uh, and we will see how we get on at the end of the video. But to get us underway, what we're gonna do is we are going to mix up uh, the plaster uh, for this ceiling here. It's not a particularly big one. It's, uh, it's about two and a half meters by three and a half meters. It's on our tech ceiling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply that first coat of plaster using my 13 inch carbon steel Marshalltown. And then we're gonna flatten it in using that 18 inch Nella. So we'll catch up at that point. You're a rebel, getting into trouble You are kinda like a fire, like a fire, like a fire Unpredictable, so original You are never backing down, backing down, backing down That's what I like about you Okay, so this ceiling has had its first coat you saw on the time lapse uh, me applying it. Now this ceiling is not particularly flat, there's a few waves in it so it'll be a good challenge for the 18 inch uh, Nella Midi just to see how straight we can get it just using uh, a flexible trowel. So what I'm going to do now, the ceiling is pretty wet but normally I would flatten this with a plastic spatula right now so I'm going to give it a go just using this 18 inch uh, flexible trowel just to see how it comes out. So let's have a look now. Okay, so 18 inch uh, midi. At this point, I'm not massively expecting there to be any huge issues um, because the plaster is pretty wet already. I'm gonna do as reach as far as I can. It's really annoying. I uh, Last couple of weeks, Luke and I have been, we've been rendering a house down in Heathfield. And I've, uh, most of the time we mix up using a, a paddle mixer. Um, just purely because it makes, uh, it's a little bit easier to keep it clean. Um, I appreciate uh, that's not how 
uh, sand and cement is supposed to be mixed up. I appreciate that's not how sand and cement is supposed to be mixed up. It's meant to be folded. Uh, it will mix in a folding motion, but it makes it a bit easier to keep clean. Um, but the downside of it being is that the paddle uh, has still got a little bit of residual sand and cement in it, uh, on it. And uh, it's uh, dragged a bit through the uh, plaster, which is a bit of a pain in the neck. So that's not ideal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an initial flatten using the 18 inch uh, midi and then I'm going to go over it again uh, when it's pulled in a little bit. It's still very wet. So normally when we use a, uh, a spatula we have an 800 which we use, use for domestic jobs around kitchens and sockets etc. Makes it a bit easier to manage but we also have a meter and a 1500. Now the downside of a spatula is that it's very difficult peripherally to see end to end and it's quite nice when you're using a large uh, plastering channel like for instance an 18 inch that you can see uh, both ends uh, peripherally in your vision so it's a lot easier to pick up misses as you go. So I have noticed that the quality of the flattening does seem to be a little bit better. It does take a fraction longer but you do seem to get a nicer finish. So again hopefully you can see here we've got a few trail marks Obviously, it just seems to do a, a nice job. You'll see here, possibly on the screen, um, this isn't actually Artex here. They've actually filled uh, the light switch here or a rosette, I think, that was in the ceiling. And they really overfilled it with filler, so it's quite high. I should have really scraped it back, but I couldn't be bothered. Um, and then this section here is a very big dip, so I wouldn't be surprised if I get a couple of... Uh, tram lines from the trowel where it's bridging across the low spot. It's just nice, you need very, very little pressure as you would expect. Very similar to that of a speed skim. Okay, so this has had its first initial flat, and hopefully, you can see. Uh, in the background, it's not uh, absolutely perfect. You wouldn't expect so uh, that anyway. The plaster is uh, very wet, but I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. A lot of those misses are already gone, especially on a ceiling that's pretty wavy. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to leave this for a few minutes just to skin over a little bit so just some of that uh, shininess has disappeared. And then I'm going to flatten that again. But I probably won't record that, but I'll just show you the finish uh, after um, I've done it, but just have a, uh, so you can have a look at what the initial flatten that looks like. It looks like the following. So you can see, you can just see in the corner there, that's where that massive lump of filler was. It was about uh, five or six millimeters. It was pretty thick. Okay, so this has had its second flatten. So if I uh, show you what the ceiling looks like now, and all I've done is wait five to ten minutes, let it skin over it a little bit, and then just run that 18 inch uh, Nello MIDI over it again. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply that second coat off camera. I'm going to catch up to the point where I'm flattening that second coat in uh, using the 18 inch MIDI. So, we'll catch up at that point. It's that awkward moment when you go halfway around the ceiling and you realize you forgot to turn the microphone on. So, all the audio is lost. But essentially, the point where I'm at is I've put on the uh, first, second coat of plaster and I'm actually halfway round flattening uh, the ceiling in. Uh, so you can see I'm pretty much at the point of uh, this corner here. And I'm just going to do nice long strokes into the middle of the ceiling. Now, for the most part, I'm just going to uh, trowel in this direction and it's because the ceiling is waving like that with the joists. There are a couple of quite large waves uh, around about the middle of where the light is. So they're the ones we're trying to get rid of if we can. So other than just cleaning up the corners, I'm just going to try and keep it in this direction 
towards the end of the set, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a pass the other way, just to make sure I've not created any ripples uh, plastering in one direction. I would expect as well uh, to get a reasonable amount of uh, plaster coming off on this flatten, uh, just because of how wet the plaster is. You can see there, there's a fair amount uh, coming off the trowel. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of that plaster every few passes, um, just to help really flatten it out. This here is really where one of those big lumps are, just in this area here, a big dip, sorry. It's um, probably not visible on the camera, but there are quite a few air bubbles in the plaster at the moment. It's just where the plaster's are really thick, um, just to try and straighten out if I can. The other thing I also did as well is I mixed the plaster up a little bit stiffer this time, not an awful lot, but a bit thicker just to get over some of that Artex that's still showing through and uh, most specifically that filler um, that was in the ceiling. Um, I really should have scraped that off, but as I said earlier, I couldn't be bothered. Um, the last thing I want is for any Artex or that filler to come through as I start wet troweling, because at that point I can't get rid of it. It's just really nice using a, a trowel, a large trowel. It makes picking up those misses an awful lot easier. Because um, you can see peripherally, as I mentioned earlier, uh, where those misses are. It's a lot easier to keep track of um, how well it's flattening in. But, oh. Okay, so this has now had its uh, second flatten. Um, so what I did was put the second coat on, did the initial flatten, waited about 10 minutes for skin over a bit, and then I flattened it again. So this is how it is currently looking. So you can see, this is after the second flatten. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this for probably 15, 20 minutes, uh, clean up, etc., tidy up my edges, and then I am going to do a first wet trowel using the 18-inch uh, Nella. What I'm actually going to do as well, because it's such a large trowel and it's covering the ceiling quite quickly, is I'm actually just going to do a light spray using a hose lock uh, sprayer just to cover the whole ceiling first rather than using uh, a brush. So I can just run around doing that wet trowel uh, without having to worry about adding water. So what we'll do is we'll catch up at that point. <clears throat> so hopefully you can see where I've sprayed the wall down, the, the ceiling down. All I'm gonna do is just keep wiping that fat back onto the wall to lubricate the trowel, lubricate the ceiling. Just really push that water back into the plaster. And because it's an 18 inch trowel, as I've mentioned already, um, I'm not going to be able to put as much pressure on the plaster because I risk flexing the trowel a bit which obviously I don't want. So I'm gonna hit the plaster a little bit wetter than I normally would. Okay, so this has had its first uh, wet trowel. As already mentioned, this is a little bit earlier than I normally would with a carbon steel uh, trowel, just purely because it's such a large uh, a trowel and I'm not able to put as much pressure on it so I don't flex that trowel. Um, it's a little bit wetter, uh, but this is how it is coming out so far. Uh, so what we're gonna do is now we're just gonna leave that for again, five or 10 minutes, wet trial it again on that second wet trial, and we'll see how it comes out then.
Okay, so that is this plastering set done. All I did off camera is the second wet trowel uh, is exactly the same as the first wet trowel. All I did was uh, spray down half the ceiling and then run that 18 inch uh, Nella over the whole ceiling uh, all the way around. So this is how it came out. Now you see in the photographs, uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, how it came out. It came out fairly flat, uh, fairly flat. Um, especially given the deviations that were in the ceiling. Uh, I think this is going to paint up really nice. So what do I think about just using uh, a flexible trowel all the way through? Well, I was a little bit cheeky in using a really large uh, plastering trowel, really large flexible trowel to try and help uh, reduce those waves that you typically get with a flexible trowel, but also hitting it an awful lot earlier. One of the things I did notice, which was really nice, flattening in with a large flexible trowel, uh, as we mentioned earlier on in the video, it makes it an awful lot nicer, should we say, to, to, to flatten in. It makes it easier to pick up those miss, misses because uh, the trowel, although it's a large trowel, uh, it, it's end-to-end -end is still in your peripheral vision, so you can pick up those misses as you go. Whereas when you're using an 800, a meter, or whatever size spatula you're using, uh, it's really easy to miss uh, those, those holes in the plaster until uh, you're doing your next uh, flattening with a trowel, uh, for instance. So in that respect, uh, it was quite nice. Uh, with regards to doing the wet trowels, um, it was nice being able to hit it a little bit sooner. Um, you did obviously notice that you're losing a little bit of compression uh, that you would get with a stiffer trowel, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't have been able to run a carbon steel trowel at this stage. Um, it would have been far too wet. Uh, to be honest with you, at the point where it is right now, I could probably do, I'd probably be doing the second wet trowel right now, uh, rather than the fact that these, uh, the, these, uh, the, the, the set is, is finished already. So overall, uh, what do we think? Uh, is it something that we would do or use all the time? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, several reasons. One, um, flexible trousers are not as robust as carbon steel trousers, so uh, they don't tend to last an awful long time. Certainly in uh, our trowel bag, they get battered pretty quickly. But it is quite nice to, to try and produce a really nice finish using these flexible trousers so that it is nice to know that I can do it. Uh, I may continue using it every so often just to give me something uh, new, a different challenge, um, but do I think it beats using a carbon steel trowel, certainly for your first wet trowel? Um, no, I don't. With regards to the 18-inch trowel, um, I haven't had any kind of uh, aching in the elbow or the shoulder, etc. And I have been suffering with that a little bit recently, uh, finishing the, uh, the schools that we plaster recently, uh, but also having just finished rendering a house uh, as well. I have been feeling it in the shoulder and the elbow. So I'm pretty sure if I was going to suffer using this trowel, uh, I probably would have felt it today, but there hasn't really been uh, any issue at all. So uh, my thoughts, it's nice to know how uh, to get a nice finish using a flexible trowel, but we'd still recommend uh, certainly getting your skill level up using that firmer trowel first. With regards to the 18 inch trowel, um, it really is a pleasure to flatten in, so much so that we've actually bought another one. We'll be featuring this uh, in the channel soon. Um, some of you might be surprised which one we've uh, bought uh, to test out and compare against the other ones that we have. So you'll have something to look forward to uh, in the next uh, couple of videos when, when that trowel comes up. So we hope you've enjoyed this video. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.